How do we end up at the U.S. Supreme Court? That's, it's a long story. I'm Jack Phillips, and this is Masterpiece Cake Shop. We're in Lakewood, Colorado. I want to live my life as though Jesus Christ were with me all the time, because he is. But I want to live in a way that honors him in everything that I do. All my life, I love to draw, love to paint, love to create all kinds of artwork like that. That was, you know, how I fill my time if there was nothing else to do. When I first graduated high school, I needed a job, went to work in a bakery, found that I loved the entire environment of working in a bakery. And I saw that you could combine the two, the art that I love to do and the art of baking, like that's just a natural. One day I'll open my own bakery, I'm thinking. Took a while, put away some money, bought some stuff, and here we are. I'm Lisa Elfrick. I'm his youngest, the one that stuck around in town. We just kind of grew up, all of us kids worked here at some point. I have a brother, sister, and me. There's always been a core family here. Two men came into my shop one day and they sat down at our wedding desk and we'd have introductions and they say, we're here to look at our, for a wedding cake and it's for our wedding. And right away I'm thinking, I can't help these two guys out because I don't make cakes for same-sex weddings. So I try to politely and say, you know, I'm sorry guys, I don't do cakes for same-sex weddings. I couldn't hear much of what was going on, just like little bits, but it was really short. They went out, stormed out, flipped me off, swore at me, and then started a campaign against me and sued me. It was pretty quickly afterwards we started getting phone calls and then they just started coming and they were so awful that my dad just took over the phone and wouldn't let any of us ladies answer it. The case has progressed to where now we're at the U.S. Supreme Court. After the couple filed a complaint with the Colorado Civil Rights Commission, the commission decided to pursue that. The Colorado Commission then heard that case as well and affirmed the ALJ's decision, which was that Jack has no First Amendment rights in this case. And the Colorado Court of Appeals said the same thing, that Jack has no First Amendment rights and was not engaging in speech, nor did he have a right to freely practice his religion. The U.S. Supreme Court has found over and over that you cannot discriminate on the basis of race and sexual orientation in the status absolutely like race. So in order to comply with both, obeying the law and my conscience of not doing these cakes that I can't do. We've decided a while back that when the ruling came down that we wouldn't make any wedding cakes, period, which is a devastating thing for us. Um, it was 40% of our income about. Before this happened, I had 10 people on payroll. Now I have four, counting me. I have refrigerators in the back that during the springtime, summertime, they'd be full of wedding cakes. It'd be people, a lot of hustle and bustle around. What's at stake in this case is the right of all creative professionals to be able to create artistic expression that's consistent with their convictions. But I think we really need to ask ourselves, it's not just the Christian faith that's under attack here. Are we really willing to have Jewish, Muslim, Catholic, Protestant creative professionals all purged from the public square simply because of their religious beliefs? I serve everybody who comes in the door. I may not make that cake, but the person who comes in is always welcome. And same thing with these two gentlemen that came in. I serve everybody. I just don't make cakes for every event. It's had all kinds of moments. It's not always been, you know, lots of fun. It's not always been horrible that, you know, you just want to hide. Um, but there have been dark moments and really exciting moments. But watching him go through it, and I think the community and people, as they know my dad, when they watch him go through it, he's just level. If I could communicate anything to the people who take their time to call me up or read an article, look me up and send an email, how much I value that support and how much I want to stand firm, to do what's right and to honor my God and to let them know that what I'm doing I'm also doing for them and that they will be able to say 
I agree with this man. He's doing what's right, and I hope he wins. He has such a kindness and a compassion, and people are drawn to that, and they come in and just want to talk to my dad. They might buy just a cookie, and they'll spend a half an hour here just talking to my dad because that's the type of person that he is, and that could be in the middle of the storm, and people just don't know that he's going through crazy stuff because he just has always been able to handle it, which is why I think one of the reasons that God has chosen my dad to be the one for this because he just can handle it. It's easy as a lawyer to think about the legal principles involved in a case and, and defend the injustice of it, and I'm certainly all about that and pursuing that. But when you actually come to Masterpiece Cake Shop and you're in, in Jack's world, and you see the devastating loss that he has sustained as a result of this. The loss that means he can't go on vacation because he has no one to keep the shop open. The loss that his family doesn't have half of its income anymore. Um, those types of things you, you can't catch over the phone and you certainly can't capture in a legal argument. This experience hasn't challenged my faith in any negative ways. It's challenged me to grow and to uh, spend more time in the Bible and with fellowship with other, other Christians, other believers, to encourage me and encourage them and help each other to grow more in our faith. That night I got out my Bible and I was like, God, you gotta show me what it says because I've always kind of lived off of what my parents believed. So it's been five years now, it has catapulted into just a true, um, like a true love for God's word and what it says and a desire um, to follow it. I'm amazed at the courage they have, at the joy they display in the midst of suffering, and just the peace that they have in walking through this. It's a small bakery, it's just a family place, but he's enabled me for over 20 years to make a living doing the art, doing the painting, doing the sculpting, working with the people, serving as many people as, as I can and as well as I can. It's a love for the God who created me and a desire to want to serve Him and follow Him. My dad's the best. <laughs> he, he writes, he signs my paycheck, so he's oh, the best. Wow. Just kidding. <laughs> See, my, actually, my mom does now, so he's, yeah. he's out of the picture. <laughs>